Rahul, thank you very much. It's great to have you on the Frankly Speaking show today. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. It's been 10 years in, as an MP for you. You fought your first election in 2004. And this is your first TV interview? Your first interview? Well, it's, it's not my first interview, but it's my first formal interview of this type, yeah. Why has it taken so long? Well, I've done a lot of media interactions prior. Um, I've done press conferences and I've spoken to the media. But mainly my <coughs> focus, the bulk of my focus um, has been in internal party work. And that's where I've uh, been concentrating. So that's, that's where most of my energy was going. Or oh, is it that you've been reluctant to communicate more on a one-to-one -one basis? No, not at all. I've, I mean, I've had uh, many, many press conferences that you've seen, sir. I don't, it's I don't not that, that you issue. wanted to avoid touching on difficult or tough issues. No, I mean, I like uh, difficult or tough issues. I like dealing with that. So now that this is your first detailed and long interview, Rahul, in 10 years, we have a lot of ground to cover. Sure. So I have one request to you right at the start, that let's be as specific as possible on the subjects that we deal with today. Do I have your agreement on that? Yeah, I mean, we'll be, we'll be specific, but um, if, I, if I would like to sort of explain things in a bit, uh, in a broader fashion, I think uh, okay. that would be okay with okay. you guys. And if I want to draw you back into specifics. So you can draw me back as much as you want. Okay. So Rahul Gandhi, the first point is this, that you've just avoided this whole question about whether you're open for the Prime Minister's post. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me, yeah. Rahul, that you're avoiding a difficult contest. See, um, if you look, if you look at the speech I gave in the AICC just a few days back, the issue is basically how the prime minister in this country is chosen. Where the prime minister is chosen in this country is through the MPs. We, the, our system basically <coughs> chooses MPs and then the MPs elect the prime minister. Uh, I said pretty clearly uh, in my speech um, uh, in AICC that if the Congress party so chooses, and the Congress party wants me to do any, anything for them. I'm happy to do that. Uh, it's respect for the process. In fact, uh, announcing your prime minister prior to an election, announcing your prime minister without asking the members of parliament uh, is not actually was written in the constitution. You did that in 2009? No, we didn't. Of course you did. Uh, no. What, what we did in 2009 um, was that we had an incumbent prime minister. Uh, prime minister won the election. He then <coughs> went to parliament. The members of parliament decided that that prime minister was going to continue. And there was actually a process where he was asked. They were asked you named your prime ministerial candidate, Rahul. That's, that's, that's it was, really, we that's had a, we had a We had an incumbent prime minister. Uh, and uh, there was no question of our changing him. See, Rahul, we can go up and down on this question. Yeah. The fact of the matter is this. Who else will they choose? Oh, no, Who else will Congress MPs choose but Rahul Gandhi? That's, that's up to them, right? But what what one has to do, and I think this is, this is central to what I keep saying, is democracy is about respect of processes. Democracy is about non-arbitrary decisions. Democracy is about spreading decisions. It's not about destroying processes. There is a process in the Constitution. That process says, and it's clearly written in the Constitution, it says, members of parliament are to be elected by the population, and members of parliament are to elect the prime minister. All I'm doing is respecting that process. Are you avoiding a direct face-off with Narendra no, Modi? There is, is, there a, is there a fear of loss, Rahul? Because this election, frankly, is not looking very good for the Congress party from overall estimates. And the belief, the growing belief, is that if Rahul Gandhi has not picked up the challenge officially, that means there is a fear of loss. He's avoiding a direct one-on-one -on -one battle with Mr. Narendra Modi. Rahul, yeah. you must answer that now. Two. To, to understand that question, uh, you have to understand a little bit, a little bit about what uh, Rahul Gandhi is and what Rahul Gandhi's circumstances have been. Uh, and if you, if you delve into that, uh, you'll get an answer to the question of uh, what Rahul Gandhi is scared of and what he's not scared of. So if, I mean, the real question, right, is what I'm doing sitting here. Uh, you're, you're a journalist. When you were small, you must have thought to yourself, um, I want to do something, right? You, you, you decided to become a journalist at some point. Well, why did you do that? 
You're asking me the yeah, question. Yeah, the question. This is a conversation. Because, yeah, because you I, wanna, because, you, I, because I like because I like and enjoy being a journalist, and what, because what it is, is it? a professional challenge for me. My question to you is, Rahul. Uh, no, I'm going to answer you, the question. Are you avoiding a direct no, face off no. with that? I'm, I'm going to answer the question, but I just want to ask you: when you were when you were young and you thought about being a journalist, mm -hmm. what was what drove you? Once I decided to become a journalist, I cannot be half a journalist. Okay. Once you've decided to get into politics and you are leading your party effectively, you can't be leading okay. your party by half. So I throw the question, okay. Rahul, so I'll, with I'll, respect back I'll, at you. And my question to you is, Narendra Modi is challenging you on a daily basis. So he, I'll, he, I'll, I'll he, answer, you're not answering the question I asked you, but I'll answer, I'll answer the question uh, that will give you some insight into what, how Rahul Gandhi thinks, okay? And for that, I'll have to expand a little bit about my growing up, how I grew up, the circumstances I grew up in. What I saw when I was a child was my father, who was a pilot, and because of circumstances, was thrown into the political system. And all I saw when I was small, after, after my grandmother died, was my father in constant, constant combat with the system uh, in India. And then, <clears throat> I saw him. Um, I saw him die. Actually, right. In my in my in my life, I've seen my grandmother die. I've seen my father die. I've seen my grandmother go to jail, and I've actually been through a tremendous amount of pain when, as a child, when these things happen to you. I mean, there's absolutely no. There's. What I had to be scared of, I lost. There's absolutely nothing I'm scared of. Though there's, I have a aim. I have a clear aim in my mind. And the aim is that I do not like what I see in Indian politics. It's something that is inside my heart. It's like when, you know, in, in our mythology, when they, talk about, when they talk about Arjun, he only sees one thing. He doesn't see anything else. Uh, you ask me about Mr. Modi, you ask me about anything. I only see one thing. And the thing I see is that the system in this country needs to change. I don't see anything. I'm blind to everything else. Okay? I'm blind because I saw people I loved being destroyed by this system. I'm blind because this system every day is unfair to our people. I asked you today, you come from Assam. Um, you know, and I'm sure that you also, in your work, feel the unfairness of this system. I'm, you're not going to answer my question, so we're not going to go there. But this system, every day, every day, every day, every day hurts people. Okay? And I felt the pain that this system can cause. I felt the pain uh, with my father. I saw him every single day of his life. So the question of whether I'm afraid of losing an election, or whether I'm afraid of Mr. Modi, or whether I'm afraid of these things is, I mean, uh, it's not, it, one sec, let me, it's not actually yeah. the point. What I want to do, I'm here basically for one thing. I see tremendous energy in this country. I see more energy in this country than I see in any other country. I see billions of youngsters. And I see that this energy is trapped. And this energy is trapped for a couple of things. And this energy is Rahul, trapped... can I draw you back to my question? Yeah. I, I, will, I will go into those areas and I respect yeah. what you're telling me about your personal journey. It's not, Rahul, as if I lack empathy for what you're saying. Yeah. In fact, I'm sure many people do. But my question to you is, Narendra Modi calls you a Shehzada. Now, let's be very specific, Rahul. Narendra Modi calls you a Shehzada. What is your view of Narendra Modi? A. B. Are you afraid of losing to Narendra Modi? Rahul, please answer my question as specifically as you can. What Rahul Gandhi wants to do is Rahul Gandhi and millions of youngsters in this country want to change the way the system in this country works. What Rahul Gandhi wants to do is empower the women in this country, wants to unleash the power of these women. I mean, we talk about, we talk about being a superpower. You're avoiding my no, question. No, not avoiding your question. Uh, my question to you is what is the Congress Vice President's view of the BJP's prime ministerial candidate. I think we'll defeat the BJP in the next election. And what is your view of the BJP's prime ministerial candidate? The BJP has a prime ministerial candidate. Uh, the BJP believes in concentration of power 
in the hands of one person. I fundamentally disagree with that. I believe in democracy. I believe in opening up the system. I believe in the RTI. I believe in giving power to our people. We have fundamentally different philosophies. What uh, is your view? Would you like to expand your views? The Prime Minister, the pri your Prime Minister accuses Narendra Modi in his press conference yeah. of presiding over, and I quote, the mass massacre of innocent citizens on the street of Ahmedabad. Right. Mr. Rahul Gandhi, my question to you is this. Do you agree with your Prime Minister when he says that? Well, I mean, what, what the Prime Minister is saying is a fact. I mean, uh, Gujarat happened, people died. But the real issue as far as I'm concerned... How do you accuse the Mr. Narendra Modi of it? No, Gujarat happened, people died. The real issue at hand here... How is Mr. Modi responsible for it? Uh, he was chief minister when Gujarat happened. But the fact remains that Narendra Modi has been given a clean shit in the Gulbarg massacre case by the SIT and the court, Mr. Gandhi. My question to you is, can the Congress party sustain its attack on Mr. Narendra Modi on this issue when he has been given the clean shit by the courts in the Gujarat riots? Mr. The Congress parties, the Congress party and the BJP have two completely different philosophies. Our attack on the BJP is based on the idea that this country needs to move forward democratically. It needs to push democracy deeper into the country. It needs to push democracy into the villages. It needs to give women democratic power. It needs to give youngsters democratic power. It is about opening the doors of the Congress party, about empowering the youth. Uh, How is Narendra Modi responsible for the Gujarat riots? When the courts have given him a clean shit, politically your party stack is to criticize Narendra Modi and draw him into the Gujarat riots. Our political party is fighting an ideological battle against the BJP. And let me draw out the two pillars. Our party believes that women should be empowered, that democracy should go to every house, that the RTI, the Narega paradigm should be further expanded. The BJP believes that power should be extremely con con uh, concentrated in this country. Few people should run this country. And the large mass of people in this country should should have but, no voice. But specifically speaking, how is Narendra Modi, your party criticized him for the 2002 Gujarat riots. How can you do that when he has been given a clean sheet in the Gulbarg massacre by the SIT of the court? No, no, it was challenged in the court. The court upheld the SIT findings and therefore, legally speaking, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, you cannot draw Narendra Modi into the Gujarat riots, implicate him personally. Do you believe that strategy of your party is fundamentally wrong? The, strategy, the strategy of my party is very simple. Everything that we have done over the last five years, okay, ten years. In fact, if you look all the way back to the freedom movement, every single thing we've ever done is empower people, okay. We empower people in the freedom movement. We empowered farmers by in the Green Revolution. We empowered the citizens of India uh, when we did the telecom revolution. We've empowered millions and millions of people through, frankly, the most powerful, the most powerful legislation that has been that, that has, ever been take, has taken place in this country called the RTI, Right to Information. Things that used to be closed, things that were in closed doors that nobody knew about. Did I'll you come to that, but you haven't answered my question answered on the Guj question. Gujarat riots. Gujarat riots is the question. You, your party has consistently wanted to put Mr. Narendra Modi on the back foot of the Gujarat yeah. riots. He says, he says the courts have given me a clean chip. And, and I'm asking you today, is your party's argument about putting him on the back foot on the Gujarat riots flawed? given the way the courts no, have looked in, at it. Uh, the Prime Minister stated his position on the Gujarat riots. The Gujarat riots took place, people died. Mr. Narendra Modi was in charge of Gujarat, uh, Gujarat at that point. I am bringing you to the real ideological battle that is taking place here. The real ideological battle that is taking place here and the one we are going to win, and that has always been won in this country, is the battle of empowering people in this country. Of course, there is uh, your point about the Gujarat riots and it is very important that people who have taken part in this type of thing are brought back, are brought to book. But the real issue at hand here is empowering the women of this country, giving them true power. We talk, we talk about uh, superpower, we talk about superpower, India being a superpower. Uh, we can only be half a superpower if our women are not empowered, right? What I want to do going forward is basically focus on three things. Focus on empowering our people, truly empowering our people, giving them, giving them democratic rights within the political party. I want youngsters who come in and really, really push democracy in the party. I want to empower them and I want to make India, together with everybody, taking everybody together, 
I want to put India on the manufacturing map. I want to make this the center of manufacturing I, in the I, world. I, I, I want to make this place at least as much as the manufacturing power as China M is. Mr. You say that Narendra Modi was chief minister during the Gujarat riots. And the BJP was in power. The BJP was as much in power in Gujarat during the riots. Right? As Akhilesh is in power in Uttar Pradesh. Or for that matter, the Congress party was in power when the 1984 anti-Sikh riots happened. Now, let me quote. <clears throat> You spoke in one of your speeches of the anger of your grandmother's death. I think it was on the campaign trail in Rajasthan. You spoke about knowing the people who killed her. And you spoke about anger and managing your own anger and quelling your own anger and drawing it into strength elsewhere. Now that speech of yours became a subject of controversy with Narendra Modi posing a series of questions to you in 84. And he said the following, and I want to quote him, and I want your categorical and specific response. He says... He's crying for the assassination of his grandmother. But has he shed tears for those killed in the 1984 riots? I want to ask the Shehzada, and he remember Mr. Gandhi, he's constantly deriding you by calling you a Shehzada, whether your party killed Sikhs in anger when your grandmother died. So following from this, I have two questions. My first question is, do you acknowledge the role of congressmen in the 1984 riots? B. Will you apologize for the riots as your party demands an apology from Modi for the Gujarat riots? Well, well, two things. Uh, in 1977, um, when my grandmother lost the election, we went um, and lived in 12 billion in Grassland. And the, the people who came with my grandmother, those people who stood by my grandmother, were Sikhs. Uh, pretty much everybody had deserted my grandmother, but the Sikhs were standing with my grandmother. Okay, uh, I think the Sikhs are probably one of the most industrious people in this country. I, I admire them. But we have a prime minister who's a Sikh. See, I don't have the same uh, world view as my opposition. What those two people did to my grandmother right, was two individuals. I don't turn around and take my anger, which existed then, frankly, doesn't exist now, and brush it onto an entire community. Uh, that's just not me. No, I'm sure you don't, but my question, I'm was, coming, I'm, I'm, my question was, do you acknowledge the role of congressmen in the 1984 riots? Because there must be justice. Mr. Gandhi, there has to be finality. The Gujarat riots cases have moved forward and many people have got justice. If I just compare that to the 1984 riots, you can look at the status and case history of what happened with Sajjan Kumar, Jagdish Taitler, HKL Bhagat, Dharamdas Shastri. And the one story which you hear there is that the cases are endless. They go on for the longest period of time. I'm asking you again, yeah. so, Mr. Gandhi, before you seek an apology from Modi, would you apologize for the 1984 riots? So, would that be something you so consider? I was, I do not take my anger which existed on two people, two individuals, who did something uh, evil and wrong, and overlay it on millions of people. I think that's, that's criminal, okay? Uh, did the Sikh riots take place in Delhi? Absolutely. Were they completely wrong? Absolutely. Were congressmen did, involved? Did innocent people die? Absolutely. Were congressmen involved? Some congressmen probably were involved. But have they been, have, has justice been yes. delivered to There them? is a legal process through which they have gone. You admit but some congressmen were probably involved. Some, I mean, some congressmen have been punished.